Hello there. I have been neglecting my tomato plants a little bit and now I have an aphid infestation. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for helping to make this channel possible. My top supporters are trueaquaponics.com and glassbottleoutlet.com. Make sure you pay them a visit. So today I'm going to show you some signs of what to look for before it gets uh, quite this bad. My lettuce has a few aphids and it's not too bad. But the first thing you'll discover are the ants that are running along the beds. I use that as their super highway, makes it easy accessibility to get to the plants. Here's a small aphid colony on the lettuce and down here is an ant that's taking care of his little farm and he will protect those aphids from predators like lacewings or ladybugs to make sure that those aphids can keep producing some nectar for them. Another very obvious sign that you have aphids is what looks like sawdust on your plants but it's actually their molting process and their old shells that are just being discarded and then down underneath your plants you will notice usually some black residue along with their molted exoskeletons and this is just nectar and whatnot that's dropped down and it gets a little sticky sometime if you're not being careful and of course after inspecting your plants for other signs the most obvious sign is finding the aphids themselves here's a tomato leaf that I pulled off that has few generations of aphids on it so obviously that's a very good sign that you probably have a problem I like to rinse off the plants just to knock off some of the aphids and to clean off all those shells that are uh, sitting in here sort of allows you to start from scratch and detect uh, new outbreaks later on um, I'll hose these off with a pretty strong burst, but I won't do my lettuce that way. Um, I'll lightly hose that off, but the tomatoes can handle a little bit more abuse than the lettuce can. And you got to get up under the bottoms of all the leaves too, because that's where those little buggers are hiding. Now the water doesn't kill them, really. It more rinses them off. A lot of people think that it will crush their their shells but it does and it takes a little more effort than some water hitting them so you really just have to rinse them off and it reduces their numbers but it does not get rid of them all together it's only been about 10 minutes since I blasted this plant and it did not take very long for these aphids to come back in. I may have missed part of this, but I hit these plants pretty hard. Here's a bunch of aphids that have washed off the rafts and ended up in the water. So here they all are, all still alive. I don't think there's any dead ones in here, so the water does not crush them at all. It just does rinse them off though. It takes a while for them to drown, or you just squish them. To get the ants under control, I like to make up these bait stations, so let's take a look at what's involved with that. The solution for ant killer is pretty easy. You just need about a half a cup of sugar. And then two teaspoons of borax, just whatever you use for laundry if you have some around. It's super cheap. And then about 12 ounces of water. Of course it has to get mixed up pretty well so this this is a pretty heavy sugar concentration so it'll take a while for it to dissolve into the water now that the solution is well dissolved it looks like it's just water so it's definitely a good idea to make sure you label your bottle so some dum dum doesn't go and drink it on you but basically to make up your trap essentially it's not a trap it's more of a station for them to grab some of this food and bring it back to their home. So I just take a lid to, this one's a peanut butter jar, any type of lid will do, or tray or whatnot. 
Some people will throw cotton balls in here. I'll just fill it in with some stones. And once I put the solution in here, this stone will be used to help keep the ants from drowning in, in the solution. You just want them to come in and drink the solution and bring it back to their colony so it kills everything else. So if you're an ant lover, this is not what you want to be doing. We'll just pour in some of that solution. This is all expanded shale, so it's floating a little bit, but that will just absorb that solution in. And we're going to leave this right next to the edge of the rail, so as they come walking by, they're going to see this and come in for a drink at the bar. I'll set one up right by the super highway here to entice a few of them in. A little sugar water right there for them too. This one's already checking things out. Now his buddy has come along and has detected that. So it's not going to be very long until there's a bunch of these guys here taking some of that sugar back to their colony. I also have some of these little tiny ants making their burrows in the floor of the greenhouse. They don't bother the plants at all, but they make a mess of the floor, so we're gonna leave them a little gift too. The best solution that I've come up with so far is to get an army of ladybugs and release them into the plants. So usually what I'll do is order a pack by mail order um, I'll usually get around 3,000 or so and then um, put them in the refrigerator for a while until the evening and that basically slows them down and gets them so they don't want to fly off as quickly and then at night I'll uh, distribute them into the plants uh, usually near the base and they'll wander their way up into the plant and sort of uh, hang out for the night and that gets them established and they aren't quite as freaked out and want to fly off as quickly. So here's one bag of 1,500 of these ladybugs. These are actually the Asian lady beetles. Come sealed in this pack, so you gotta cut them all open. See, it doesn't take very long for them to wake up, even though I had them in the fridge for a while. But they're a little bit slower than if it was 80 degrees in here. So it doesn't take much to spread these out. I just drop them around the plants and eventually they'll climb up and in, into the plants. Now I do usually do these at night when it's dark out because then they just sort of stay with the plant and don't fly off. But it's almost dark now, but I need enough light to, to film this video. With my Dutch buckets, I'll usually drop a bunch in each bucket and they'll climb up the plants. So this was a bag of 1500. I keep another 1500 in the fridge for another week and I'll do this again. I like to let them get established. They'll start uh, breeding, laying their eggs, and then uh, I'll introduce a second batch. And it seems to do a pretty good job as a one two punch to get rid of the aphids. One of the nice things about having ladybugs in the system is that they will reproduce in here as long as there's a ample food supply for them. So here they are doing their reproducing and here is one in their larval stage and here's one that is in its pupa stage right before it's becoming a new ladybug. So once I get these established in here they do a really good job at keeping the aphids under control. One other way that I use to help control the aphids is usually in the spring before it gets warm in here. The ladybugs don't like the, the cold weather and so usually I'll use some insecticidal soap and put it in my atomizing sprayer and blast the plants with that. And several years ago I did a video about using that. It's very effective. Um, sometimes I would put neem oil in it. Uh, the problem that I have with it is that especially with the neem oil in it um, it leaves a residue film on everything, so you'll start seeing it build up on the uh, greenhouse covering and eventually on the plants if they're a longer term plant. Um, I'm also not 100% sure how great it is to get a little bit of soap, even though it's just a tiny, tiny amount, uh, into the water of, of the aquaponic system. 
hydro it probably doesn't matter since you don't have uh, fish in your water but uh, aquaponics I'm a little bit more concerned about it another method that I like to use is diatomaceous earth and again usually during the ladybug off season in fact I have one right here hanging out and I like to use this uh, during the off season like I said um, because diatomaceous earth uh, not only does it harm the aphids but it can also harm the ladybugs too um, so this is a good alternative uh, to using the insecticidal soap and I put this in just a jar with a couple holes in it and shake it onto the plants usually when the fan is blowing so to try to get it up underneath the leaves but this is just a lightweight powder and it basically is like mini shards uh, to the aphids and it cuts open their uh, shells and they basically uh, dehydrate to death or hemorrhage to death so that's about all I have uh, for today. I have in the past used lace wings too, but they're much harder to see, especially with my older eyes. So I prefer to use ladybugs just so I know that they're around. If you have any suggestions or comments on how to keep your aphids under control, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Once again, thanks for watching. While I was finishing up filming the rest of the video, on my way back out the door, I checked out this first one that I put in and it's been about a half an hour and dinner is served they had no problem telling all their friends to come uh, check out this sugar and borax solution so they are now they're now eating that and bringing it back to their colony it's been about three days and there are no more ants visiting the bait station and no evidence of any wandering along the rails